Hey, good morning, options traders. Well, this is a special request video from one of the traders in our group asking about the short ladders. And sometimes it's called a short ladder attack. And I had to clarify it with them because there's actually an option strategy called a short ladder. It's not a real popular name for it. It's more of a back spread or Christmas trees, but there are some strategies. He said, no, no, this, these are the short ladder attacks we've been reading about, such as what brought down GameStop. Well, these short ladders have got to be the dumbest idea since the pet rock. Actually, they're even worse because anybody who understands the markets would realize that this simply cannot work. Now, as I was doing some research on this, there is no shortage of articles all explaining how it works, but they don't really explain it. They just say, oh, here's how it works. This person short shares, this person buys it, and they laugh all the way to the bank. Unfortunately, these people are just repeating what they've heard. They don't really understand how the markets work. So for example, here's an article from back in 2014 from Seeking Alpha, which usually has some pretty good writers and commentary. But this person looks like he's got a pretty good career, Coopers and Librand, CPA, but has absolutely no idea what he's talking about. And I'm sorry to call people out on that, but sometimes you just have to do it when it's completely unfounded. And this is the half-hearted attempt that he does to explain it. And he says they will do what's been called a short down ladder. It works as follows. Short A will sell a counterfeit share at 10 bucks. So keep that in mind, a counterfeit share. Not a whole bunch of them, just one. So for right now, just forget that it's a counterfeit share I think what he's talking about are really the naked short sales, which means you don't have to do a locate and actually find the shares to initiate the short sale. He's not really saying that these are falsely printed off in a back room somewhere and made to look like shares. They're just naked shorts, but that doesn't really even matter. But he says that it's this counterfeit share. Somebody sells it at 10. Now short B, who is apparently a cohort of A's, will purchase the counterfeit share covering a previously open position. And then short B will then offer another counterfeit share at something less, let's say at nine. Short A will hit that offer, should actually be lift the offer, and short B will come down and hit short A's bid. Short A buys a share for nine, covering his open position at 10 and booking a $1 profit. Sounds amazing. Should just be able to sit here and do this all day. And by repeating this process, the shorts can put the stock price into a downward spiral. Absolutely, completely false. So while I was searching the web, I did find one article that got it right. And that was here from a website called Institutional Investor. Headline, Wall Street Bets conspiracy theorists claim a short ladder attack brought down GameStop. Short sellers have no idea what they're talking about. And I love this little tagline. Put it up there with California wildfires are started by space lasers. But if you go through the article, what's most striking, they sort of explain it and it says, but here's the thing, short sellers have never heard of the strategy. So check this out. On Tuesday, Jim Chanos, founder of Kinecos Associates, who has made his entire career as a short seller, tweets, can anyone explain to me what a short ladder attack is? I have seriously never heard the term before this week. That tells you everything you need to know. It's just a really bad myth that's getting floated around on the internet. So unfortunately, when you find articles like this that will at least say it's not true, they don't really go through and show you why it can't be true. So hopefully that's what I'm going to do in this video. And to do that, we need to jump over to an Excel spreadsheet. So now we're over into an Excel spreadsheet. And yes, I know it looks confusing, but we're going to take it slow. And you've seen similar formats to this in previous videos, especially with the who determines price video where I talked about the marginal traders. And that's these four trades right here in yellow. So what I've done here is I've created just a hypothetical small market. I have a list of bids. So I have a trader who has an order, let's say, to buy shares at 99. This is what he's willing to pay. So if he's willing to pay 99, he's willing to take that or less. Somebody else comes in and says, I'm willing to do a little bit better. I'll pay 99.10 or less. This guy says, I'll do 99.20 or less, and they just keep stacking out this way. 
Now the asking prices work in the opposite direction. These are traders who are willing to sell. So this trader says I'm willing to sell shares for 100 or higher. This guy says I'm willing to sell for 99.90 or higher and so on down the line. So where these prices came from, I have no idea. There's just whatever reason these traders wanted to place these prices. And this is the way that a market works. It's called a limit order driven system. If you want to place a market order, yes, you can come in and hit the bid or lift the offer and pick off one of these orders, highest bid or lowest offer. But to place the trades, to put them in the book, it has to be a limit order. So once the market maker, ECN, whatever you want to call it, receives these orders, the next job is to balance the book. We need to find an equilibrium point where we have an equal number of buyers and sellers. So by the way that I've drawn this book, I can see by looking at the marginal pairs that this book will balance somewhere between 99.50 and 99.60. So right now, I've picked a hypothetical price of 99.55, and I've programmed Excel to count the number of buyers that would be filled at that price and the number of sellers. So we've balanced six and six. Watch what happens if I go 99.51. 99.51, we still balance. I could go 99.52, we still balance. I can do this all the way up to 99.59, and we still balance. However, as soon as I go to 99.60, watch what happens. Now I've got an extra seller. What I've done is I've pulled this trader right here into the mix. See, I've got seven sellers. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and I've brought this guy into the mix. And I can't have him there. It's going to unbalance the market. I'll get the same thing if I go to 99.50. See, now I've got an extra buyer. And that's this buyer right here. I've got seven buyers. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. I've brought this guy in. I need to balance somewhere in the middle. So it's got to be greater than 99.50 and less than 99.60. So let's go back to 99.55. And this would be one of our market clearing prices. Now, as another side conspiracy note, some traders will say, well, this isn't true. The market maker has an incentive to price it at 100 or at 95, and they simply don't because your profits are maximized when you balance buyers and sellers. And that could be mathematically proven. You always want to have an equal number of buyers and sellers. So it's a little bit of a self-policing system. The market makers, the ECN computer centers, all have a beautiful incentive to say, let's get the market balanced. And that's why I always say it is the market that determines the spread, not the market makers. And it's these four traders right here who determine the exact prices that we have to work within. It's these four traders. Because as I talked about in that video with who determines price, I could change any of these prices in red or in green, and it will not affect the equilibrium. This is where the action is taking place. So now that you understand what these prices are, over on the right, we have a graph. On the vertical, we have prices. On the horizontal, we have the quantity or the volume. And this upward sloping line are the bids, and the downward sloping line are the offers. So if we graph them, we get this X, and it looks like a basic supply and demand curve from economics. And that's exactly right. So the theoretical balancing point for this market would be right here, right at the X. But unfortunately, in the markets, we don't have a single price system. We have a two price system we have a bid and an offer. And so that, if you really want to do a detailed analysis, is going to muddy it up a little bit. But let's do it to show why this short ladder attack can't work. So let's take a look at the perfect scenario first. This is where a one price system would balance. We would balance at this price, again, at about 99.55. And we would have a volume right here of about six. But in the financial markets, again, we don't have this single price. We have a bid-ask spread. So what's our spread? It's right here, 99.40 to 99.60. Those are the limits that we can't bring into the mix. So let's take a look at where those spreads are. So there's our bid-ask spreads, and we can see that the asking price is above the theoretical price. Buyers have to pay a little bit more. The bid is below. If you wish to sell, you're going to sell below the theoretical price. 
Now I've extended these blue lines all the way across because we'll need those in a little bit. But the first thing to notice is that with a bid ask spread, we have some inefficiencies in the market. And the first one is that we get less volume. We used to have this for our volume if we had a one price system, but because we have a bid ask spread, we're now down to here. So all of these trades are missing. And if you look, there's also this little triangle right here right there that is called a deadweight loss area. And that's because those are trades where traders were willing to place trades, but that never took place because of the bid ask spread. So the brokerage firm never got the commissions, government didn't get the taxes and the traders didn't get the trades. It's just lost. All right, so what are these triangles up here? Well, remember that this downward sloping line represents the offer. So right here at the top, is our trader who's willing to sell for 100. That's that guy right there. And they gradually come down until we get real close to the marginal trader right there. So these are all trades that are not filled. That's this entire list right there. Now what about the red line down here? That's all of these trades up here, including these marginals at 99.50. So that's this guy right here at $99 is that trader right there who's willing to pay 99. So he's not filled. He'll still be on the books. But we get this right up until we get right underneath that high bid, the marginal bid. So this is the way that the market stands. So if you come in another trader from the outside and you want to place a trade, you can either tighten up the bid ask spread by increasing the bid or reducing the offer, in which case you'll just still be a limit order, but you'll be in between the bid and the offer. If you wish to do a market order, you're either going to hit the bid or lift the offer, in which case you're just removing one of these trades. But the thing to notice right now is that these red triangles are not filled. That'll be important in a little bit, so I'm going to hit again. These areas in red are not filled. Now let's take a look at the far right side so we can make sense of this. What's going on out here? Well, in green are the traders who are filled. That's these people. Right there. Those are the bids. That would be this line segment right here. And the asking prices would be all of those down on this downward sloping line. So notice that when we're on the right side of the equilibrium, the bid prices are greater than the ask. It's a cross market. And that means that these traders are willing to pay more than what the sellers are willing to sell for. So yes, they just get matched up and that's why they're not even on the books anymore. Those are all executed trades. All right, so now that you have a basic idea of the layout of a supply and demand graph in the markets, why is this whole idea of a short ladder attack just completely ludicrous? Well, remember, the guy said in that article that they're going to start off by placing an order to sell below the market. So let's say that they wish to place an order to sell for 99.20, because remember, the market price is 99.55. And in the article, he says that they're going to place one share, that's a whole separate story, one share at some lower price at 99.20. Well, where is 99.20 on our graph? It's right there. And if you're on the sell side, it means your order is out here. And what does that mean? It means you get automatically filled for the highest bid. You're just going to do what's called an or better order. So if you place this order for 99.20, you can't expect to get filled for 99.20 and that it's going to show up on the tape as though the prices are falling. Why? Because if you place an order to sell for 99.20 and it filled, this guy is going to be upset. He's going to say, I had an order to buy at 99.50 and I didn't get filled. Why was there a print at 99.20? This guy's going to be upset. I was willing to buy at 99.40. Why did somebody else get filled at 99.20? These are what are called trade throughs and they would be due fills. It's a complete violation of the N. BBO or National Best Bid Best Offer System. So that's a just a first thing that is just so wrong about this whole idea that they can just place some arbitrary low point and have it print to the tape. 
That's really the crux of the fallacy. Now, it gets even worse when they say, oh, by doing this, I can also have my friend be the one who buys it. Well, how is that possible? It's going to go to the person who is the highest bid. It's going to go to this bidder right here at 99.50. So they would certainly fill that order before they said, we're going to fill it at 99.20. So that's the whole problem with it. You can't place lower and lower prices and expect them to print. You can even try it for yourself in the markets. Go to a stock, whatever the current price is, place an order to sell it for 50 points lower than the current stock price, and it will fill immediately for the current bid. Place an order to buy it for $100 more than the asking price, you will fill immediately for the asking price. And that's because you're out here in this range. You're on the crossed side of the market. This is where the market is. So the whole idea is that they're placing these arbitrary low prices and somehow getting them filled. Now, could it be done? Well, they would also have to stack the bid with a whole bunch of other traders in their corner so that when these prices went off, that those people would be the first in line to get filled. But now it also means that this whole short ladder attack group would have to be on the buy side exactly the opposite of what they're trying to do. Now, what else could happen? Well, if you wanted to make the argument that they come in and short enough shares to knock this guy out and short enough shares to knock this guy out and market makers or new traders are not stepping in to fill those spots, what's called walking the book, and they short enough shares to knock this guy out and short enough to knock this guy out and they do the entire order book and they knock everybody out, or at least enough to make the prices fall drastically. That's possible, but to do that, you would need to build up a massive short position. You're not going to be closing it out for profits like they said in the article. And if we all saw what happened to, like Melvin, with the huge short positions with GameStop, they lost 50 some percent of the hedge fund. It's not a free thing like they're making it out to be. So I hope this at least helps to explain. I know there's a lot to talk about, but this is also why it's an easy conspiracy theory to pass along. But when you really dig into it, you'll see it just simply cannot work. It's the same thing as saying, stand up and pick yourself up by your pants off the ground. It, it just can't be done. It might sound like it can be done, but you can't pick yourself up off the ground. Equal and opposite forces. It's the same thing here. There are other forces at work that will keep this strategy from happening. So don't let these articles shake you out of your goals. Remember to trade the markets, but hedge your opinion. And the best way to do that is with options. So for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a brand new technical analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.